Tis the season for giving, and that spirit has been alive and well in one community in Buffalo since long before December blew through. In fact, it was prompted by a tragedy in the native island of Puerto Rico. And this month on Community, we are celebrating that strong community, the Puerto Rican community, right here in western New York. Yep, and we are celebrating right here on this stretch of Niagara Street that has been designated Avenida San Juan. Hola. Hello everyone, I'm Claudine Ewing. We're in Buffalo, New York, but Pete, you were recently in Puerto Rico. Yeah, absolutely, Claudine. And you know, when Hurricane Maria just ripped across the island, it changed so many lives. But I had a chance to go there last month and see firsthand how Western New Yorkers have helped that island on its path to rebuild. It's been 14 months and the scars of Maria are still everywhere. Generators in San Juan, road reconstruction in Ponza, water where a beach once was in Rincon, heavily damaged homes and buildings across this 100 by 35 mile Caribbean island. How bad was the storm at its worst? In Maricao. Here in this Maricao area, Maria was the worst storm we'd ever had. Alberto Perez Valentin has been the mayor in Maricao for 28 years. He says that after Maria, all the roads to his town in the mountains of western Puerto Rico were impassable. So he had to work hard to make sure his people were not isolated. So we need to have uh, an helicopter from the Coast Guard and National Guard to take food, water, and all the other things to these people because they were so completely uncommunicated. Work continues even today, clearing debris and fallen earth to get these mountain roads wide enough for two lanes of traffic. While the island is officially 100% restored when it comes to electricity, the grid is still very fragile. Power lines are still tangled and mangled, and some individual homes are still waiting. In fact, this house just got its power back last month. Plenty of work still needs to be done. And all of a sudden, you know, the Bell Center became ground zero. But the generosity of Western New York has made a difference. Lucy Condelario works at the Father Bell Center in Buffalo, where donations of food, water, and cash flooded in last year after the storm. The cry went out to the community, and you know how Western New York is. I mean, we're very giving. We're called the city of good neighbors, you know, for a reason, because we, we all, as a community, came together. They gathered 3,000 gallons of water and 144 pallets of food. Hispanic leaders began meeting on the very first day of the storm to coordinate relief efforts. There was plenty of concern across Latino Western New York because so many have family and or property in Puerto Rico. Concern turned into generosity. And in addition to the tons of food and water that was shipped with the help of the state and National Guard, cash donations also came in to the tune of more than $227,000, 179000 of which was sent directly to the island. Today, we could stand back and look and see where our dollars and the difference that our dollars made in, in Puerto Rico. Cass Rodriguez of the Hispanic Heritage Council made contacts on the island and scouted the areas where those dollars could make the most impact. The relief committee voted on where the money would ultimately go. It hurt it. It hurt it to see the island now destroyed the way it was. Chito Olivencia, who spends winters in Puerto Rico, was on that committee and remembers when he went to his home in Armaguay last November and saw the devastation for himself. I traveled the island with him last week, and he says despite the widespread damage that still exists, the difference is remarkable. The greenness came back, you know, all, you know, everything is growing back, the coconut trees are going back, the, the what got the trees, everything is coming back. But the, the, uh, the bridges and the roads that got fixed, uh, you know, that we're, be, we're able to drive from, like that's a new bridge we just crossed over. Yeah, yeah. And seeing some of the places, like this orphanage in Bayamon, where some of the donations were sent, brings a tear to his eye. Right, I, I am emotional now. I, I feel great to see that, that this place looks brand new. As well as being able to talk to the people here in Puerto Rico about how much it meant to them to know people 1,800 miles away cared. We, we are a Christian uh, home here, and we, we believe that God uh, is great at the... Uh, he touches the, the hearts of the people anywhere. And every time we saw the help, especially even me, you know, working as a 
as a first responder, even me, I saw the help. I was like, yes, we need this. We need more of this, you know? I am proud to be a, a, a Buffalonian, and I'm proud, of course, to be a Puerto Rican. As the winds of Maria ripped across the island, devastating everything and everyone in its path, back home in Buffalo, a storm of generosity and support was also brewing. Hispanic community leaders gathered food, water, and other items for immediate relief and organized a major fundraising effort across western New York. And that fundraising effort added up to almost a quarter million dollars. Much of that money came right here to Puerto Rico to help the people rebuild. The largest chunk of that went to the biggest necessities, clean water and restoring the power. So we're just kind of working our way, same as the uh, hurricane did. Jorge De La Rosa is coordinator for Operation Agua, a faith-based program that continues to install water filtration and purification systems to the people in need. They focused on hospitals, senior centers, schools, and remote villages. And another location was here at San Juan's Roberto Clemente Coliseum, where some municipal offices are and where volunteers were housed in the wake of the storm. The people that we were getting from the United States, from New York, from Buffalo, from Michigan, from all over the states that were coming here to help. This wall inside the complex shares messages of support from many of the people who responded to the island's call for help. And that is why Jorge and Operation Agua felt this was a place they needed to help. Those union workers that gave their vacation time and they came here just to help Puerto Rico. So this system was filtrating water so that they could work, was filtrating water so that they could cook for them. So the money that we received was helping the people that is helping. In all, $20,000 was sent from those Western New York fundraisers to help this effort. Jorge was ecstatic just to see the support from far and wide. Even me, you know, working as a, as a first responder, even me, I saw the help. I was like, yes, we need this. We need more of this, you know. The outpouring of the, what we call the diaspora, the Puerto Ricans that are in the United States, was what saved us. The Hurricane Maria Relief Fund coordinators also earmarked $50,000 for a program that installs the solar generators in remote and underserved areas. They are produced by a company called Inversol, which was started coincidentally by David Rodriguez, who lives in Rochester and spent part of his life in Buffalo. Rodriguez also has family in Puerto Rico. When he came here after Hurricane Maria, there was no help for the Puerto Ricans in terms of where they can find solar generators. So far, they've delivered and installed four units with immediate plans for another 11, and even more in the future as the need arises very close to the mountains in the center of the island where that was most affected after the Hurricane Maria passed in. Something that they say would not have been possible without the help coming in from places like Buffalo. It has been a, a miracle in terms of the way we unite and the way the people from the United States help us through the emergency of Hurricane Maria. Next on Community, a group of UB Law students help meet the needs in Puerto Rico. We focused on food justice, we focused on energy work. See how their mission trip changed their perspective on the world and increased their passion for law. Boy, I gotta tell you, the temperatures in Puerto Rico, I'll take those any day. But as you saw by those images, the road to recovery there, on the island it is still a very long one but luckily thanks to the generosity of western new yorkers it's a road that they don't have to travel alone and not only did western new york help out with the basic needs also the legal needs a group of students from the ub law school traveled to puerto rico after the devastation of hurricane maria you are looking at the faces of student attorneys from the University at Buffalo Law School on a mission in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria devastated the island. I woke up in the middle of the night, the day that Hurricane Maria hit last September, and I thought to myself, there has to be a way to help. There has to be a way to bring the student attorneys from University of Buffalo to help. The next day, Professor Kim Diana Connolly started an effort to make it happen, and donations, including money from so, UB alum, made the thought to help that we had a reality. They knew that in a couple months that we could make a difference legally, because people have legal needs. And after a disaster, once people have the necessities like food and water, then you'd need to figure out What's going on with my home? How can I get recovery? How can I get back into my job? How can I do lots of things that lawyers help with? They served over 80 people with legal needs. 
Ten students traveled last January, including Saida Gibson Lorenzen. Uh, aiding uh, survivors of Hurricane Maria with uh, their FEMA appeals. And they form partnerships with people in Puerto Rico. They need policy research, they need assistance, they need to hear things. What students have been doing is they've been helping one group create a nonprofit. A smaller group returned in July. So Margaret was McKenzie was there. We worked on policy papers. We focused on food justice. We focused on energy work. I think it just gave me a more globalized perspective. Even though Puerto Rico is part of the United States, it really opened my eyes as far as the needs in, in the community there. The UB Law students were doing more than law work. We helped um, rebuild a fence for a farmer when we were there because the farmer, after Maria, all of his fences went over. Mm. So the dogs were getting into his sheep and livestock and destroying his whole um, livelihood. And the UB student lawyers are now doing not-for-profit and other legal work for El Departamento de la Comida, or the Department of Food. The chief justice of the Supreme Court of Puerto Rico came and thanked me and made me promise to come back. And they are going back in January 2019, and they will work with policy leaders. We're doing things that the people of Puerto Rico really need. A disaster has changed the way future lawyers will practice. Where do you see yourself, Margaret, in two years, three years? Someplace making a difference, helping people. And this probably played a role in Definitely, it. Definitely, yeah. I know now that I can do public interest work. Mm -hmm. um, I can do I could do something like this during the summer. I can donate. There's there's plenty of ways that you can help out. The young, fresh legal minds making a difference for the people of Puerto Rico. On Power 93.7, WBLK. We are celebrating the Puerto Rican culture at WBLK. Stay with us on Community. And you know, Claudine, one of the great things about the Puerto Rican community is the culture. And you can see it everywhere from the food to the clothing and, of course, music. That's right. When you talk about music, you know I love music. You mm -hmm. like to eat, but I mm -hmm. love the music. And one of the hottest DJs on the airwaves locally is celebrating and helping out the Puerto Rican community. But thank you to everyone who stopped by the Tops on Niagara and made a donation to the Hurricane Maria uh, relief effort. We donation. definitely appreciate it, and we're reflecting on that. The and voice of Yasmin Young, who was on the front line for WBLK, helping collect donations for the people of Puerto Rico. Oh, big shout out to you. You, the people who gave. She stumbled across this picture of kids at the relief drive to be quite touching. They're from that community and they said that they heard on the radio, they heard me talking about it and they wanted to come by and bring a donation. It wasn't a big donation, but it was just so heartwarming for them to come by and donate, you know, as kids, what they had to make a difference in their community for their people who were in Puerto Rico suffering at the time. One thing we know for sure about the Hispanic culture, music is strong. Even though I don't speak Spanish and I can't understand what they're saying, just the, the instrumentation, just the beat of the music, just the energy that's embodied in that music. Like, you, even if you can't understand what they're saying, you're still going to move to it and you can't help but it starts with like a foot tap and then, you know, the whole body starts moving. All of a sudden you're up and you're like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> She's not just a DJ on the People Station, she's got her ear on the community. We've got a lot of listeners that are Puerto Rican or have family who is in Puerto Rico, and I thought it was important that they know that, you know, we're standing with them um, and their family as they go through that hard time. She says Hurricane Maria's devastation made her want to connect on a human level. It transcends music, it transcends heritage, it transcends all of that. It just becomes my people are in need and if your people are in need and I have a way to help you help them, I'm gonna do it. We're the city of good neighbors, right? Puerto Rico is a part of America. They are American citizens. A fact not to be forgotten. That's why when she can, she shouts out the Hispanic community in Buffalo and all of Western New York. We are the city of good neighbors here in Buffalo, right? We should always embrace different music from different cultures. And I think that that's what makes 
us rich. That makes our culture rich is the infusion of so many different sounds and um, different languages, musically speaking. Relleno de papa, so that's potato balls. They're stuffed with potatoes and ground beef. We're going in the kitchen. Popular Hispanic foods from scratch. They bring families together. When you think about Christmas, I think in, in every in every home and in every ethnic background, the food is the major uh, draw. And it looks yummy. That is coming up next on Community. You know, we're celebrating the Hispanic community and the Hispanic culture. And just like the German, the Polish, you name it, one of the centerpieces of any ethnic culture in Buffalo and most places is the food. And we're here with Raul and Maria Hernandez and uh, Niagara Cafe, one of the centerpieces. And how important is food and, and, and when, it, when it comes to celebrating the not only the Puerto Rican community, but also holidays and things like that and drawing community together? Well, at, at this time of year, when uh, when you think about Christmas, I think in, in every in every home and in every ethnic background, the food is the major the major uh, draw. And uh, right away we think about in here we think about pasteles, which is very very typical in, in Puerto Rico and here. We think about our rice, which is arroz con gandules and the roast pork. What about the taste of that food? Oh, and it's universal. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves it, and it's not spicy but it has very good taste. We use all uh, natural herbs and um, we use the same recipes our, our mothers and, and grandmothers used to make. Check out the Good Eats at the Niagara Cafe on Niagara Street and across the way down on Swan Street, check out Monty's. The beef and cheese pastelillos, uh, we sell a lot of the acapudias, the, uh, the green banana kind, like a lot of fried pork, a lot of chicken. And we were here during Hurricane Maria as the family was trying to make sure that other relatives were okay. Abuela is here. Hola, Abuela. Oh, good Let's talk about the food. Okay. The good food. What do we have here? Uh, right now we're cooking up arcapurias de guineo, which is a green banana fritter. So, has green bananas, plantain, and jautia with ground beef. Mm. And then I have. Uh, I think these ones are plain beef pastelillos, but we make a different variety of plain beef, beef and cheese, plain chicken, chicken and cheese, and pizza ones with beef pepperoni. That's Over good. here we have um, a big pot of arroz con gandules, rice with pigeon peas. But literally a taste of home, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. We try to do everything that we can to uh, have the same flavors of the island come back to uh, Buffalo. It's kind of hard finding all the uh, produce and everything so we try our best. Right here I have the meat that goes inside of my pasteles that I'm going to be making. So this is uh, like stewed pork. How important is it to have grandma with you? It's really important. She teaches me everything that I need to know about all, all of our cultural things. She's so in depth with us learning all the recipes and everything to know because at the end of the day like who's going to keep on bringing the traditions. And why is food so important for your culture? I think it brings family together. When you saw this community come together so strong and send so much over to the mm -hmm. island, how did that make you feel? That not only the Hispanic community coming together, but other ethnic groups and, and really Western New York as a whole? I, like happy. You don't really expect people to help everybody, you know? And it's just like, I would feel it's kind of overwhelming at the same time because it's like, oh, you know, there is a natural disaster and just because they're not from there, they're willing to help everybody, you know.
Thanks for joining us for this edition of Community. It has been such a joy sharing with you the Hispanic population and the traditions, but also giving you a firsthand glimpse at how the City of Good Neighbors has pulled together to help the people of Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico to Buffalo, New York, as we all get ready to usher in a new year, we want to continue to celebrate the great things that are happening in our community, as well as tackle some of those issues that really have to be addressed. We invite you to continue to reach out to us on story ideas that you would like to see covered on Community. And once again, we'll see you on our next edition. I'm Claudine Ewing. And I'm Pete Gallivan. Feliz Navidad.